Hello, we're going to talk about making proton NMR data tables today. These tables are going to be very important for your lab report. A good portion of your lab will be on the analysis of IR, proton, and carbon NMR data. So an NMR data table has four or five columns. I'm going to go through it quickly. You should know what shift is. That's the chemo the frequency at which the peaks show up. So those are recorded into the first column, 1.1, 2.4, 9.8. The second column is the integration. For some reason, it's not showing up very well, but this is a 3H there. It shows it, and it's already been normalized for you. 2H, 1H, and so then that's put into the column. Then multiplicity, that's the number of lines for every peak. And this is a one to two to one ratio, so it's a triplet. Uh, one to three to three to one, quartet, and then a singlet. So these first three columns are reading the data directly from the table. This fourth column is the assignment. And here we have the peaks circled. I usually underline them, but I'll start here and I'll say this is a CH3. And I know it's a CH3 because I'm starting with the integration that's who's appearing there. And I underline those because those are the hydrogens that are being observed here. And then it's a triplet. So that tells me that next door there's a CH2. And so that is my partial structure that will go there. Here it's a CH2 next to a CH3 because it's quartet. And here it's a CH, we don't see any coupling to it. It's common for aldehydes and the chemical shift at 9.8 tells us it's the aldehyde. And again, I like those underlined. So then the fourth col fifth column, which well, I'll put it here, is not in this, but it can be, is the assignment. This is really partial structure. This is part structure. And the partial structure is where the big part of your points is coming from. So assignment is A, B, C, you've assigned a letter or a number to the peaks, and then you'd say which one it is in here. So at 9.8, it's A, and that, and you put it here, A. And then B is the CH2 that's next to a CH3, so that's B and this is C. You're certainly welcome to put that into the data table and put this on the structure that you draw in ChemDraw. But these three peaks are reading from the data, the column and you'll get or from the spectra and you'll get points for that. This one is where you're doing the real analysis and putting the structure together and that's required and that's going to be most of your points. And then this one's optional. So let's do a couple of examples quickly. So in this one, we can read the peaks off and they're already in the column for me. I already did it 0 0.9, 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.4. Then integration. So if this is 3H, and remember this is a ratio, so we just compare the height of that stair step to the next one. This one's also three hydrogens. Then the rest are all about two thirds the height of that stair. So it's probably, if this is three hydrogens, these are all two. So we can just fill in the rest at two, and they're already partially done. Then Triplet, triplet, beautiful, right? Then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And so I would call that a multiplet. And then if you want, you can say it's six lines. And the next one is five, as a multiplet, and it's a um, five. So we'll put a five there. And then this is hard to tell from this particular spectrum, but remember you have the ability to expand on your raw data that you gather. So expand that and see if you can separate out those two peaks. Otherwise you can put multiple. Um, anyway, here it's told for you. So now the partial structures, this is a CH3 next to a CH2. This one's also a CH3 next to a CH2. And we underline that because that's what we're observing. The next one, the rest are all CH2s because they're all integrating to two. 
So we underline that. And then we're going to look at the shift in the multiplicity. So this one's a triplet. So we can assume it's next to another CH2, but it's at 2.4. So it's next to a carbonyl. Same for this one, CH2 next to a CH3 and at 2.4, so next to a carbonyl. This one is six lines, so that's five hydrogens next door, so a CH2 and a CH3, and this one must be next to two CH2s to give you a five line spectrum. If you want, you can then assign these. We have two next to the carbonyls. This one is already assigned as an E, which is because it's next to a methyl, so that's D and E. Whoa, wait a minute. Um, e and F right here, and that's one spin system. This is the other spin system, so these are all coupled to each other through multiplicity, and the carbonyl separates them, so there's no coupling from this group to this group. So A is the one that's next to the carbonyl, uh, D is the methyl from the integration, so we have B and C, and we can tell those by the multiplicity. So C has got to be next to the methyl and the CH2 and B is between two CH2s. So next we'll do one that's a little harder. We look at the IR and I don't want to spend too much time so that, but I want you to remember you've got SP2, you've got SP3 CHs. Um, remember that SP2 is above 3000, SP three is below 3000. So it looks like we have a little of each. We have a carbonyl, carbon double bond oxygen around 1750. And I'd say we, it looks like from some peaks in here at 15, 1600, um, that we have an aromatic ring, 15 to 1600 aromatic ring. And I don't have enough, um, columns here. Then we have here at 1100 a CO. So it looks like we have an ester and an aromatic ring and that's going to work with this because I've got two oxygens. It looks like enough carbons for an aromatic ring. I come over here we can start at the bottom here at 7.3 and the integrating to five hydrogens is an aromatic ring and uh, who knows what it is. It's a bunch of peaks on top of each other. So I've got an aromatic ring. Then I have 2H at 4.2 and that's a triplet. Then at 3.7 I have 2H and it's a singlet. 2H, whoops, uh, 1.8 2H, got them in the wrong column there. And this is some kind of multiplet. And finally, a triplet. And it's three hydrogens. And it's around one. So it doesn't really matter where you start your interpretation. So if you want to start here, this is a CH3. It's at one. That's pretty classic for a methyl next to a carbon. It's a triplet, so it's next to a CH2. This is a CH2. It's a multiplet. We've got a bunch of carbons and hydrogens on the side. We're not quite sure yet. Here I have a singlet. I have a CH2. It's a singlet and it's being pulled down field by two things that don't have uh, hydrogens on them. And then I have a CH2 that's also pulled way down field. Um, I'm going to put it next to an oxygen because we know we have oxygens. And uh, it's a triplet, so it's next to a CH2. This is five hydrogens, so the other thing that we can assume is that this is monosubstituted. And you want to put as much as you can into that table to convince the instructor that you have fully analyzed the spectrum. So that's monosubstituted because it's got five hydrogens on it. So I have a phenyl ring. I have a CH3 next to a CH2 which appears that's probably this, right? Because I only have a couple CH2s. So that's this. And then I only have one other over here that's next to a CH2. So I have a propyl group, CH2. I'm running out of space here. 
and then I have a CH2 that's pulled down field probably by a carbonyl and a phenyl. So if I put the phenyl group here in the carbonyl, that a reason why it's a singlet, and then an oxygen there, because it's CH2 is next to an oxygen. Not very pretty, but there you go. So what I really want you to do now is to go into your workbook and practice making these tables. There are problems in the online book, there are problems in several websites, and there are problems in the workbook, and you need to practice making tables so that you do a good job on it, and you get the points on the lab reports, but also in any homework. So go ahead and do that and then feel free to contact your instructor if you're struggling with uh, some of these interpretations.